Travis, I'll start with you. You gave us okay. a high level understanding of what you do with kind of you work on the thermal system, but can you dig in a little bit more about how that relates to the game experience? When you're designing a system in the thermal understanding of that, what actually does that mean? What are you looking at? Yeah, great question. Um, any system, right? Mobile, laptop, desktop. Um, when we start from it, basically we start from a piece of paper and we really have to focus on the experience. Like what level of acoustics do we expect for that system to operate at? Then what is the expectation for performance? Is it, hey, 3D Mark from a benchmark perspective? Is it VR Skyrim? Is it League of Legends? Is it Heroes of the Storm? Whatever the application is, we have a list of applications that we use that we actually benchmark. And then we use that information to set the power conditions that we wanna to operate to. Where Intel comes in, basically Mark's team and the rest of his team is responsible for giving us those requirements. Then once we have those requirements, which is power, what we call T-case, which is literally the temperature of the case or the temperature of the junction. Once we have that data, we can build out the entire system. That is basically what dictates how big the cooling solution needs to be. So if you look at like our Alienware mobile products with the quad fan solution, where we've got multiple fans and we've got heat pipes wrapping around the entire structure, we've got one of those fans positively pressurizing the system, all of that is done at the end of the day to cool those components to meet the performance experience that we want from an acoustics, power, skin perspective, and even from a, a, a cost perspective from the platform itself. But good question, John. So, and when you say skin perspective, just so everybody knows, what do you mean when they say a skin perspective <laughs> yeah. in a laptop? I was going to ask that in here. <laughs> well, from a, a skin temperature perspective, so we, I, I was using slang, which I probably shouldn't have done. At Dell, um, we have done probably over hundreds of hours of usability studies where we see how people interact with the system. Do you lay your hands on the palm rest left and right? Do you, do you, what do you like from a temperature delta, say from one palm rest to the next? Let's say you're playing hardcore gaming, QWER keys, which are your primary gaming keys for like- Or um, WASSD if you're or not playing. Yeah. I was- <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Whichever one you want, right? I was so hurt a little bit there. The core keycaps that you focus on gaming, um, we have a particular focus on those areas. The ribbing between the keys, what we call the strip cover, which is above the keyboard, the D cover itself. We have fine-tuned our skin temperature specification for every single one of those regions so when we know that hey you are playing league a first person short shooter whatever it is we have optimized that system for that particular experience and we do this per line of business hey is it the top end alienware systems all the way down the stack to the more valued valued system itself all of those are tuned based upon those specific experiences from skin temperature to acoustics to performance and to jump in a little bit and, and we'll, get, we'll go a little engineering on you guys here. The reason skin temperatures become a very critical thing for our mobile systems is when you put heat inside that small box, it goes everywhere. Right. Yeah. So even though we've got all the fans, we've got the heat exchangers, we've got the heat pipes, those bring the majority of the heat to the ambient, which is where we want the heat to go. But there's nothing. Like, it's still going to conduct up through the system, so it's going to get to the keyboard. It's going to get to the bottom channel, the the D panel that Travis mentioned. That's the bottom surface of the laptop, right? So if you have it on your lap, that's what's touching your legs. But no, no matter what we do, the heat's going to go to those surfaces, and so the amount of heat that goes there, the ratio, that's somewhat fixed based on the total design of the system. Um, and so that does end up being one of the critical parameters we pay attention to in terms of the total system power that we can we can handle. Okay, that makes a lot of sense that we're kind of, you have to kind of focus on the whole aspect instead of just, because when we think about, and when I think about cooling a lot of the time, like I think about CPU temperature and I think about those specific components yeah. versus thinking about how hot the unit is to the touch. But it makes sense that that is a... Maybe that I'm, I'm different because to me, that's that's exactly what I thought of. Of I, you know, I have a, an X14 that I lay in bed yeah. and I play, I play games on. So to me, like, you want to make sure that's that's not hot, like on your legs or on the blanket, yeah. which you shouldn't put it yeah, on. Don't put your but laptop you know on I mean. the... <laughs> don't, or put, don't put it on your uh, blanket. Anna, don't don't, don't, do, do, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But we have sensors that we can detect when you're doing that and we can adjust oh. performance optimally. Right. So, um, so, so we, I we, have, you. we have gyroscopes that we can actually see if you're flat on a table or not. Um, all of that data actually comes into play when we're optimizing a system. So we've thought through a lot of those scenarios and every single like component from memory to CPU to GPU to storage devices, all of those have been tested and we control to those temperatures to optimize that system 
basically under any condition. So if you're at high ambient, you've throttled the system, let's say you've choked off the airflow, we have safety features through, um, you know, actually some features from Intel called their dynamic tuning technology that we use to optimize that system to ensure that you're going to be safe, you're going to be operating within spec, and you're going to re reliably give the performance that you can for that specific condition. Awesome. With that being said, yeah, don't block. I didn't the even know that. Yeah, just, just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't block <laughs> just because you can yeah. doesn't always mean you should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we do a lot of work. To make sure I, you know what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm helping <laughs> testing uh, for future systems. You know, I just the hotbed of <laughs> destroying things. <laughs> Awesome. So, okay. So then we know, kind of know what Travis does. And it sounds like Travis is saying too, like you get instructions. So from Mark's team at Intel about when you're designing the system. So not to give Mark too much credit here, but it sounds like he's kind of controls what Travis can do. So oh. Mark, I know I love, oh, we, I love teasing these guys off of each other. It's really fun, but we already heard the Heroes of the Storms favorite. jokes because Mark, Anna, and I loved Heroes of the Storms until it recently kind of got decommissioned. Yeah. And Rest Travis has just been making fun of us about that. So, Mark, when you want to tell Travis what to do, what do you do in your role kind of with like the from the Intel side? Yeah, so from the Intel side, so like remember when Travis was saying like he starts off with the blank sheet of paper and they work through what does the system look like? How big is the chassis going to be? What are the, the games or other workloads that are want to run on it? Like everything eventually runs on the CPU itself. Right. And so we yeah. have to figure out how to get the heat out of that die into the ambient air. That's where we uh, move all the heat to. And so the, the, the shape of the die, the layout of the different parts of the die that, that dissipate heat, and we'll get into those in more detail later in the, in the talk, but the, the way the heat transfers or conducts from that die up through the heat exchangers and into the airflow, that's all dependent on the design of the SOC itself. And so what we do is we do a lot of work early on to give the information to Travis and his team in terms of here's what to expect. Here's where the heat's going to be dissipated on the die. Here's the areas of the die that you really need to care about. Here's how much power you're going to need to worry about for the different types of workloads that, you, that you're really interested in. And so there's a couple things that we can do. We can give it to them in terms of absolute uh, thermal resistance, um, which is the ratio of, of how much temperature you're going to get for a given power level, um, as well as here's what you can do and expect for the next generation previous or compared to the previous generation, right? So if you've got a chassis that's already designed and you want to put the next generation Intel CPU in it, here's what you would need to do from a fan speed um, perspective or a heat exchanger perspective in order to make that work. Um, you know, liquid nitrogen on a system, that, that's bringing, it's a very cold substance. It has a great heat transport capability. All of these things that we are looking at really come back to the silicon and what Intel's doing to basically provide the engine. You can think of the CPU as the engine in the car. We, Dell, are packaging the car around the engine. And so we're doing the transmission, we're doing the steering wheel, the, the aerodynamics, what it looks like, the lights, the stereo, as an example. All of that is Dell, but the core heart of the, of the car is the engine, which is Intel.